Android 10 has started to officially roll out to devices, and I got mine up and running on my Google Pixel 3a. And so in this video, I wanna go over some of the best features that Android 10 has to offer. Now, before we get started, I do want to talk about this month's channel sponsor, iMazing. Even though we're talking about Android in this video, I know a lot of you also own iPhones or any iOS device, and so you're gonna to wanna to listen up. For those of you who are unfamiliar with iMazing, this app allows users to simply and safely manage their iOS devices data from their Mac or PC. This includes just about everything, music, messages, photos, notes, apps, documents, the list goes on. iMazing also features automatic backups that can be done wirelessly and with strong encryption for maximum privacy. You can also browse and search through all of your messages and WhatsApp chats and export them to beautiful rendered PDFs, which is easily one of my favorite features of this application. There's also a quick transfer, which makes it super simple to drag and drop your favorite songs, movies, photos to your device and choose which app you want content to show up in. iMazing has so many great features that we just don't have time to talk about in this video, but if you want to give iMazing a try for yourself, click on the link in the description down below for a free trial. There's a lot available even before you need to buy a license. So one of Android 10's most notable features is the new system-wide dark mode. Now, Android has had some sort of various dark mode in the past, but it wasn't a true system-wide, fully integrated dark mode until now. And so it's certainly a welcomed addition, at least in my opinion, especially for AMOLED displays, as the dark areas of your screen will actually be off and can help save battery life meaning the pixels in darker areas, if you don't know this about AMOLED displays, will actually turn themselves off, so you'll save yourself some battery if you're constantly using darker applications. Plus, if you're using your bright phone in a dark environment, this will certainly help reduce strain on your eyes if you have dark mode turned on. If you wanna turn it on, just head into the settings app and you'll find the setting in the display menu, or you can add a quick toggle for easy access. I'm certainly loving the dark theme in system apps like Google Photos, Messages, News, and more. Another major change is the new full system gesture navigation. If you head into settings and under system and then gestures, then you'll find system navigation and you'll see the two button and three button navigation option, which has been on previous Android devices and uh, also on previous versions, but there is a new option called gesture navigation. Now, if you're an iOS user at all, you will certainly feel right at home. As a longtime iOS user myself, whenever I switch to a new Android device that has some sort of swipe implementation, uh, it's just not nearly as fluid as iOS. And so I am happy to report that Google made the right call. They borrowed the implementation and it works really well. So if you wanna go home from any application, you just give it a simple swipe up. If you want to uh, go to your app switcher, you'll swipe up a little bit and then kind of hold it in the center until you see your applications and then you can switch between your apps. Or you can also just swipe along the bottom from right or left and it'll switch between each app one at a time. If you need to go back within an application, all you have to do is just swipe from the left or the right edge of the screen, which is nice because if you're left-handed and you want to go back, if it was only on the left-hand side, that would be really awkward. Now you can just go from the right if that's easier for you or whatever way is easier for you, Google made that an option. If you wanna access Google Assistant, you can swipe up from the left or right corners of the screen. I'm a huge fan of these new gestures and if you're not, the beauty of Android is that you can always change it to your liking. You can go back to the three button implementation or the two button, or I'm sure there's an app out there that changes it to something else. Notifications have become a little smarter inside of Android 10 with some new features, one being Smart Reply, which gives you the ability to actually open up links to websites or maybe a Google Maps link without having to act on that notification. So what I mean by that is if I get a notification that comes through and I see that it's a link, usually you have to click on the notification that opens up to your messages app or wherever the notification came from, and then you have to click on that link and then it opens up a new app and it, you know, just kind of a mess. So when a notification comes through with this new feature in Smart Reply, you'll now see an option to just open the link right from the notification itself to the corresponding app. So what I mean by that is if somebody sends me a YouTube video, it won't just open up uh, Chrome and then I have to open up the YouTube, it'll just open up YouTube right away. And I assume the same thing happens for maps and if say you get a link to a tweet or an Instagram post, it will take you to those corresponding apps, which is super convenient. 
Now, if you're getting too many notifications and you're getting bothered by your phone constantly going off and you want to limit some of that, you can actually long press on a notification and you'll have some new options like alerting, which is what's happening at that moment where your phone will ring or vibrate, or you have silent, which will deliver the notification, but it will do it silently. If you're really annoyed by a few apps and you find yourself constantly distracted by notifications, you can turn on the new focus mode inside of the digital well-being menu. This will allow you to customize uh, which applications are being too distracting and kind of help you take control of how many notifications you're getting from a certain app. So basically, if Twitter and Facebook or whatever is being annoying, you can turn on focus mode. Those apps will no longer be distracting. What is unfortunate about this feature is that it's not currently available yet, just in the Android 10 betas, but in the future it will be available and it will be something that users can take advantage of to kind of help you get more focused. Speaking of not available quite yet, one of the hallmark features for Android 10 is the new live caption mode, which basically if you're watching any video on your phone, you can one tap find live captions to that video, even uh, recordings that you've made yourself. It doesn't have to be limited to a video. It could be a podcast. It can be um, some sort of, like I said, a recording that you might have done. You can hit the live caption button and it will give you the caption to that audio. This is great for people who are hard of hearing or maybe you just didn't quite understand the note that you meant to leave yourself in your audio recording. Well, now live caption can help you out all without any data or Wi-Fi needed. This could be done locally, which is huge. So I'm looking forward to checking that feature out when it becomes available, hopefully in the near future. Be sure to let me know what you guys think of the new Android 10 update in the comment section down below. And also be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more videos like this one in the future. Thank you so much for watching guys. And I really hope to see you guys around in the next video.